Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, we take you to the edges of space where we will use our knowledge and our crafts to explore in the game of exploration. In exploration, you're playing two to four players, and it is a competitive game in which you're going to be traveling the galaxy in your orbit and launching modules down onto planets, onto comets, and onto L's. Uh, uh, Lagrethrium something or other. How good? Definition. And in the game, you're basically trying to score victory points. Now, in order to do that, though, you're going to need to buy spaceships. You're going to need to increase your production value, increasing your technology, and also traveling around the galaxy in order to place certain things down like landers and like different pods and whatnot. You're using all these different techs in order to do that. Your opponents will also be trying to do the same thing along with using uh, their uh, items and whatnot to accomplish objectives. There's primary objectives and of course there's tertiary or secondary objectives as well. And you're going to have your own unique ships and you're going to have your own unique landing platform and base there on Earth. If you can accomplish in eight turns uh, the most victory points at the end of the game, you will be the winner. All right, let me go ahead and show you the game. So here is exploration and everything you see included in the game, as well as, of course, the rule books inside of this wonderful little box here. As you can see, it's going to have little miniatures and also we are, as for the uh, basic type of the game or the uh, prototype, we're using little standees and little cards there. But it all works. It doesn't really matter. Just here's an example of what it would look like. You've got the board, of course, here, and then you've got maneuvering cards here. These are the different ships in the game you're going to be able to acquire. You've got these cards here which are the secondary and first objectives and events that will happen throughout the game. Maybe you'll lose more income or have to deal with a planet rearrangement. Uh, these cards over here are going to be bonuses that you'll be getting that you'll put in front of you. And uh, then these ones over here are all additional maneuvers that could come into the game depending on what happens with the event cards. You've got the four different um, races you'll be utilizing in the game. You'll select one of them and they all have their own unique starting bonuses, their orbiting direction, the name, and their tech tree. Some of them will have in increased tech. Other ones you won't have increased tech along with starting production of value. So gold value that starts at five here. Over here are the different standees, which has each player's color. You're going to have your currency along with your experience. And these are all modules, whether they be upgrades or things you're going to be dropping down on planets. This is the board of the game, and it tells you the value of placement when you place on certain areas here, like maybe the comet or these L areas. You've got um, Mars over here, and then this over here is the moon. And it tells you the value, too. So on Mars, if you put one thing at 7, uh, 2 is 15, so on and so forth. These are all victory points. This is the victory tracker of the game. It goes all the way around to 60 points and the turn marker that goes all the way to 8. Uh, this of course is a prototype so it has a couple different things like obviously it shouldn't have 13 and whatnot but it'll be changed throughout the game so we're just going to be talking about what I have here currently. But that is pretty much all the components we're beginning in the game exploration. All right let me tell you how turn works. So before you start a turn, you're going to want to know setup. And I already showed you the setup on the board. It's going to have those five maneuvers. You're going to have one of your own factions, which is going to start off with a specific tech on it. Usually the starting tech will have no bonus, but you can go down either side of the tech tree and that will give you certain bonuses throughout the game. You're also going to start with uh, five production on your Z track here, along with after producing, you're going to get a certain amount of gold based on your production value. So if it's five, it's five. If it's six, it's six. Uh, then you're going to get to, of course, uh, choose between your uh, first objectives, your primary objectives, and then your secondaries. You'll get three secondaries and two primaries. You'll get rid of one of the primaries, which means you're always gonna ha you can have that at least one, so you get to choose between the two, and they'll set those aside. There'll be certain things like owning five development cards, having a lander on L3, having a lander on L4, uh, that, that kind of stuff in the game that you'll be trying to do. You'll be taking your color of stands. There is blue, yellow, red, and green, and you'll be utilizing them depending on whether or not you have a uh, flying disc here. I imagine they'll probably be different colors as well. After you've all that, you're all set up. Then you're going to begin a turn, which is pretty simple. You do your money earning, which is you increase your development value up by one. You're then going to gain the gold cost. You're going to go into your exploration prep, or you will be doing stuff like taking these guys here and picking three of them, selecting one of them, and utilizing it as a ship. There's laser beams, there's shields, there's destroyers, there's super fast, all kinds of stuff like that. 
Um, you'll also be uh, able to choose to buy a development card. These guys here will come down depending on your level of tech. If you don't have the high enough tech to utilize it, you cannot put it in front of you. But you can buy one for uh, a certain production value, and then you can place it down for the gold at the top right. Top right is usually going to be the cost of the certain cards. In order to deploy them, to pick them up, it'll usually be gold production value, which means you'll actually be utilizing your production value to uh, buy cards. After you've gone ahead and chosen to buy one development card or not, you can go ahead and choose to do some tech upgrades, which are all these tiny little guys that you can put onto your ship provided you have one. They all have a certain cost to them and they're used for certain things. Some of them are used to go on Mars, some of them are used to go on the uh, L locations, some on others. You can also choose the tech uh, upgrades here, these module upgrades that'll let you fly faster, maneuver better, and have stronger shields. Then. You can choose if you'd like to spend gold to increase your production for forward. You can increase your production value up on the tech track. And uh, you can then move on to the next phase, which is to fly your ship. You'll take your ship out of your location. Then you'll use your orbit to fly around. You'll have to spend energy or... Uh, yeah, you have to spend energy in order to move certain directions based on not following the orbital path. Or if you don't want to go your full distance, that kind of stuff, because gravity weighs you down, you'll be able to place your uh, pieces on landers, attacking locations basically, destroying other people's satellites and ships, and so on and so forth, trying to gain victory points, trying to... Uh, go throughout eight turns of the game and have the most of points at the end. Anyway, that's the idea of the game. Uh, let's go ahead and take it down below and I'll show you a turn for one player so you get an idea of how it works. Back to exploration the game, I've went ahead and set it up so we can show you one player and how a turn is going to be taking place in the game, as well as I set up everything else. There's things that aren't supposed to be on the board, which are all these different ships and whatnot, along with the objectives, the other sp the spaceships you can pick up, and uh, the events are supposed to go here though. But I just wanted to give you guys a small enough room so you can see kind of everything in the game. And I've only set it for one player, so he's got his gold production value at 5, he's got his uh, starting 10 and his development card here, which is added to his uh, tableau. He starts here at level one with no bonus for his tech upgrade tree and he's got his three objectives for his secondary targets and then his singular primary objective which is to own five of these guys so that's a very useful primary objective to have with this specific uh faction here setting these guys face down because these are secret objectives you don't tell your opponents what ha what, what uh, they are you're going to be getting bonuses for doing that also these specific things here will tell you what you get uh, at certain points of the game as well as how much they're going to cost and potentially any victory points so i usually look like little crowns in order to score up this track here these are where you start and around the board will take you all the way through to 60 this is of course the turn tracker getting to eight so to begin the game you're going to go ahead and start by earning money and that's going to be pushing this guy up here to six and then you're going to earn six of these Z coins. There's Z credits here. Four, five, and six. And then you're going to go ahead and explore prep. So to begin, you're going to go ahead and buy a blueprint if you would like. It will cost you two gold production points, so you'd spend two of them if you'd like. Select between three of these guys, one of them, and these are all the different ships. So you have the shield ship, money maker satellite, and a transportation vessel. Take that, put it aside, and then go ahead and put the rest of them on the bottom. If presuming you wanted to do that, then you could move on to picking up a development card, which will also cost you a uh, gold production value. The development cards are these little moon ones here. And of course, his primary objective is to do that, so he's going to pick up another one. Now, this one here requires a tech level of three, so he can't utilize it, and it's also going to cost him eight Z coins or credits. But it has no card bonus, two additional Z currency, and then, of course, two victory points uh, as soon as they, you activate this. So that's very, very useful. We'll set it aside. And by the time uh, mid-game comes around, hopefully we'll get down to this level three here. Uh, after that happens, and you're going to go on to tech upgrades if you would like. You've got the ship, and uh, you can now choose to buy these different modules and whatnot. They all have a different value, and if you look in the rulebook, it'll tell you. Uh, the colored ones are going to signify either A, maneuverability, or the flight speed. Uh, sometimes you'll have energy as well, and then finally shields here. When you start with the ship though out, you're going to actually have the highest energy value because it's going to go down the track, as well as the highest shield value, which will also go down the track as well. I think it, maybe something like that. Um, so you'll put those there. These areas here for modules where you can purchase them, they're going to cost certain amounts, and it's going to be worth a Z. Um, after that, then you can go ahead and choose, if you'd like, to spend four gold points to increase your production value. You can spend as many times as you would like, and when you do that, it'll simply push up for your next turn, which is going to give you more production to increase your likelihood of being able to place ships down. Uh, then you can go ahead and choose to build your ship. Building your ship is up here at the top, and it also has a required tech level. So picking this transporter here, I'm not going to be able to do that unless I spend 
either one gold point, uh, one gold production value, or two experience points to increase the level up from one to two. So let's go ahead and say we actually were here to start with, and we could move that to the two. Then we'd be able to place this ship down. We'd simply put it next to our tableau. We would go ahead and put the energy full, and we'd go ahead and put the shields full. And of course, if we chose to buy anything, uh, we, we put some modules on the guy. And we would select a ship. I would just go ahead and take one of these guys here, because they look pretty cool, and place it on our starting location this is red so he would start right there then uh, after you go ahead and put that guy right there you make sure you pay the cost so you have your tech level at two which is good and then you have eight z currency so you have to make sure you have that in order to launch the ship it's not enough just to have the blue friends so you have to actually make it as well so you spend that eight you still got some left which is useful and you're ready to go to the final phase of the game which is going to be launching ships you're going to be able to launch you're going to have to follow your orbital direction so if it says this way you have to go this way if it says this way it goes that way and it will also have to make you go the entire movement so if this guy here says he has to go uh, six, then he would have to move six. Maneuverability will change uh, when you're moving around the board. If you're trying to get to certain locations like here or here, there's little arrows. That is going to help you place down landers onto these locations to score you victory points. Uh, but the movement is going to help you move around the board. So this one says nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can go like that. When You, you can also exit the uh, pattern, provided you stay in the orbit. And if you want, you could spend energy to move against orbit and change your path a little bit. On the board, you see these Z currencies, and as you move past them, you're gonna score points. If you land on one of these little uh, radar solar sonar symbols, you have to draw one of these uh, nasty event cards, most likely. And if you also, if you were to land on something like, oh, where is it? Uh, these here, these are uh, experience points. They'll give you experience that you can utilize throughout the game. Uh, but the other thing, last thing you need to know really about the game is you can utilize these maneuver cards here. They'll allow you to do certain things. There's a cost on them and it tells you what you, how you modify the ships and how you utilize them. Higher maneuverability is going to allow you, once you get on one of these locations, to place down certain things on certain planets, which will score you area control points. So you utilize this, and you place one of these guys here, saying you significantly you, you signify by owning this little area here. And then on the board, all these different tracks here tell you how many points you get. If you have one L point, you get two. If you have five L points, you get 20, so on and so forth. Moving around the board, you can have more than one ship, too, and you can utilize all of them during the movement section. You're able to place things on comets, on the L stations, on Mars, and on of course the moon as well as making sure that when you do land in these spaces they have to be directly as well and this spaces directly will affect you being able to land and how it's pretty simple how it works with landing stuff you're going to use this die you're going to check your maneuverability and you're going to check the planet and then if you successfully roll the die and get high enough you're going to be able to place it down after the eighth turn is accomplished uh, everybody is then going to end the game by tallying up all the points all their little scoring either from the uh, bonus cards here or whether it be from placing down down here onto the uh, map locations and moving these guys around the board signifying who took first, who took second, third, and fourth, and so on. That's the basic idea of the game. The last thing I'm talk about really is the tech upgrades over here. As you maneuver down the board, you're gonna get bonuses, whether it be plus Z currency, or whether it be experience, uh, shields maybe, or energy, uh, plus one in maneuverability. You're gonna get instant uh, access to a development card, and you have to choose which path you wanna take as you progressively go throughout these tech trees, which will also you to of course pick up the different ships and the different development cards that being said that is the game exploration let's come up and talk about how to play so that was just one turn of many. Once that one person would take their turn, the next person would take their turn and so on and so forth. After everybody has taken their turn, that would be a round. And after eight rounds, the, turn, the game would be over. Now, of course, uh, it says turns on there. Realistically, it should be rounds because it makes a lot more sense in my head if everyone has their turn and then a round because otherwise it just feels like eight turns. So I think that's, there's a little, there's, there's goofs throughout the game as far as that going. And it has a lot to do with translation issues. So as they're being modified and changed, it's making more sense to me. I've talked to the designer about how it functions. And after I got in the re, re-updated rule books it's become a lot more clear and hopefully now you understand it based on how i explained it in the video making it easy to grasp it feels like you're playing satellites more it feels like you're playing ships in this game it feels like you're trying to orbit the satellites and drop off certain things uh these ships have changed because it gives they have all their own unique abilities some of them are going to gain you more money some of them let you go faster or you're able to transport more goods and whatnot this transporter here has a lot more value as far as energy goes and shield goes and of course you have a tech upgrade tree that allows you to gain bonuses throughout the game as well the artwork is great i love it it looks fun i enjoy the uh learning experience i had with the different l points trying to figure 
what those L points are. Go ahead and look it up on Google. Let me know. The miniatures are very nice. I like them. They remind me of the uh, BSG quality miniatures, so they will work just well, just fine. Uh, the prototype standees are cool as well. Uh, the currency and all that works. It's basically a management resource style game, along with a little bit of area control and movement around a board. The nifty things about it are, of course, the maneuver cards as well as the event cards that can take place, and you have the options of choosing which of the development cards you want to drop down and which of the uh, uh, ships you want to pick up. And of course, you have to remember that you can only pick up certain ships based on your tech level. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points is going to be the winner of the game, and that is pretty much how it functions. It gives me a little bit of a nostalgia for a couple of these sort of 4 x style games. It's a simplified, simplified version of that kind of game that involves more orbits and kind of functions as to a learning like experience as well as to how you're able to move and how you have to expel energy and uh, resources in order to do things that are kind of anti what gravity and what the poles of the atmosphere want you to do. Moving around this board and the way you move around it is going to benefit you based on gaining of course the currency and whatnot so it kind of signifies how it kind of wants you to go and then what it, it's going to cost if you go against the, the grain so to speak. The maneuver cards like aerodynamics usable only once before landing on Mars, a moon, or a comet. You can go ahead and gain two maneuverability. It'll cost you currency though. You can choose to chance it or you could choose not to. It has that risk taking as aspect. I felt like the game should have more like a, of a combative nature based on the fact that these there's like ships and whatnot that feel like they would probably to be attacking each other to prevent players from placing things down. But I think it's more about a global kind of uh, space global kind of economy in which you're just not really against players necessarily, but you want to make sure that you get everything uh, you need on your objectives before they do. Maybe if you can cut them out a couple times, it's going to help you and mess them over a little bit. But for the most part, you're trying to do what you need to do to accomplish your mission while at the least beneficial possible way for your opponents. Uh, adding extra ships into the game is going to be useful. You don't want to just be using one ship. There are ships that give you more money. There there are different cards in the game that are going to affect you in different ways and give you more points. Overall, this is a game that's right on the level for me. I do enjoy games like this, um, especially the different spaceship themes. I've seen these done similar, but not the same. But I think realistically, if you haven't seen a game like this, you should definitely check out one because it's going to give you a unique perspective as to how uh, these pickup delivery style games are going to kind of function, as well as the fact that it adds that unique gravity and that uh, aspect of being able to move around the board with a different... It's weird. It just feels like more of a space aspect based on how the rules are, are functioning. Overall, it's a solid game. Definitely check out the game Exploration if you're interested in a spaceship-themed game that has some pickup delivery. A little bit of take that, a little bit of risk, and a little bit of uh, player aversion. We want to push them away. All right, that's what I got to say about this game. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help, and we do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out the game Exploration. It's going to be on Kickstarter uh, down below in the description. Go ahead and check that out. If you like those pickup deliver games that involve a little bit of, like, spatial reasoning and um, dynamics. It's, it's interesting. It's really weird. Definitely look at the Kickstarter campaign. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'm really interested to see what people think about this game. Is it very, very unique? Is it samey? What do you guys think? Also, go ahead and check out our site, unfilteredgame.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, as well as our friends at everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek guys. All right, that's all I got this time. And as always, look forward to tracking the vastness of space with you next time.